Hey everyone, it's Liz here with Sweet Digi Scraps, and today we're going to go through a tutorial on how to create your very first layout um, using the digital scrapbooking. Uh, this way is going to be great for all softwares across the board, whether you choose to use GIMP, uh, Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, um, the Creative Suite, or PaintShop Pro. Um, you can use any of those softwares to create your your own scrapbook layouts or you can use scrapbooking softwares that are specific like My Memories or Scrapbook Flair. Um, depending upon what your budget is, what you're wanting to do, um, if you're wanting to do just basic layouts, if you want to do advanced techniques like photo editing and things like that um, will depend on what software is going to be great for you. What I'm choosing to use today is the Coral Paint Shop Pro. We're using the version 5 this is available on their website for download for a free trial and the reason I choose to use this is because it's great for those who have never used one of the softwares before and it has a great learning curve for you as well. Um, if you jump into the Creative Suite through Adobe or the Photoshop Elements, um, it's not hard necessarily but there's not as, as much explained when you first open it up as there is with this one. Now when you first open up your Coral Paint Shop Pro, you're going to find um, a screen that looks much like mine where it's going to open up whatever photos that you have in your pictures album saved on your computer. The first thing that you're going to want to do is go to the Browse More Folders section and open up the section where you have saved your downloads. So if you're using, um, I, like I've chose to use the Holiday Wonder from Download 2 through the Advent event this year. Um, if you're doing this, you're going to want to unzip that file that downloaded first and transfer it onto your computer. Um, or if you right click on it, it'll say extract here. And then you want to find that folder by browse more folders. And mine is actually a really long way away. <laughs> I have so many things. And you want to go to it and just click on it and then click OK. And what that will do is open up that folder on the bottom here for you. And you'll be able to see everything. Once it has done that, your next step is you're going to go up here to the top and you're going to go to the edit section. And once you click on the edit section, you're going to have this and it's going to look like a big bunch of mumbo jumbo. I promise um, it's not really that hard and I'm going to show you how to minimize this and make your workspace a lot easier first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to pin this to the side and get rid of this. This is just browsing your folders in case you want to open up another photo or go through a different item. You can use this part here, the navigation, but you're going to want to put that there on the side. The next one you're going to want to do is minimize this one. Bring that down here. Your organizer tray will be here and it'll float up every time you um, Every time you put your cursor over top of it, then once you go away, it'll go back down. And this is the main reason, like I said, for the learning curve for Paint Shop Pro is because it has this learning center right here. This will tell you how to do things in the program itself, as well as each item that you click on. If you click on it, it'll tell you exactly what that tool is called and what it will do for each thing. And this is why I love using the Paint Shop Pro and recommend it for anybody who is new to using photo editing programs um, simply because of this right here. It'll tell you exactly what you can do with each tool and it'll tell you where you can find particular things. You can always click on the home home center and it, you, know, you decide that you want to fix a photo up, click here and it'll tell you all of the things that you can use to click your photo to fix up your photos. Um, once you've went ahead and navigated through this, you're going to want to pin that to the side as well so you have a nice open workspace and zoom in. We're using the hand tool just at the moment. And this is where we're going to start. This open space right here um, is where you're going to create your layout. First thing you're going to want to do is grab a paper that you want to use. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm using the Wonder, the Holiday Wonder pic uh, collection that was available on the blog. If you missed out on it, you can pick it up at my store at the DigiChick. And you're going to open your paper. This is going to be the background paper for your scrapbooking layout. The next thing you're going to want to do is grab another element. doesn't matter whichever ones that you choose to do or choose to use. I'm just going to grab this flower here. 
uh, click it twice and open it up and you're going to use uh, control C and control V this is the same for any program control C will copy control V will paste um, for this for purposes of showing you since you can't see me clicking on a button I'm going to go up to the edit and copy and it'll also tell you control C will copy close out this window go back to the paper you're starting with and then you're going to do the control V or paste as new layer like I said I'm using that right up there um, just to show you but it's easier to use your actual buttons um, on the keyboard time saving as well once you've done this and you have your first item on here you want to click on your pick tool um, it's also called the move tool in Photoshop and Photoshop elements in the creative suites and you can use the same thing it does the same thing it moves it around and you can place it anywhere that you want onto your paper then you're going to grab another element uh, for me in particular I want a nice block so let's go with here and you're going to want to cut out say you want to cut out a strip of the paper this is done with the selection tool um, it's shown as a marching or as a magic wand in the Coral Paint Shop and Photoshop Elements and in GIMP but as long as it has this little marching ants look to it that's what you're going to use and you just click and drag and it will create the selection for you and do the same thing control C to copy close out the document and you don't want to change save your changes because you want it to still stay your paper and then your control V control V paste is a new layer it's a little bit different for me because <laughs> I'm used to using my fingers on the keyboard now once you have put this on here and you decide that you know this is where you want the placement to be but you want it to be behind the flower the only thing that you're going to have to do is grab a hold of this layer here that you'll see on the right hand side and drag it down below and it will automatically put it on the layer below there and then you just keep going um, to create your layout itself use any pieces any shapes that you want and um, mix and match your free creative range this is just your basic steps now once you've done all this say I just put this paper on here and I decided now that I no longer want it you can either delete the layer by deleting by right click and delete or you can click your undo button the undo button will take back steps that you've done you can go back as far as opening up the first photo now here's a photo that I've picked already that I want to use for this you can just drag this into your workspace no matter what software you're using drag into the workspace it will also be the control C and control V and you can stick it there I can get rid of this now and keep going through your organizer like I said um, this is where you have your free creative range to use whatever you choose for your layout place it wherever you want the biggest part of digital scrapbooking um, and getting started with it is playing around. It, it's basically playing around to figure out what it is that you want and what your particular styles are. You can resize each one. Um, if you use the cursor here in the Paint Shop Pro, you just wait until you see this little, see the little arrow that comes up and then bring it down to size with the Photoshop elements and the creative suites you're going to want to hold the shift key and do that and it will keep your ratios now I've decided that I want to use two leaves but I don't want to have to open it again you just right click and duplicate and it will create another one for you on the same paper one layer above it and there you go and then you just keep going with whatever elements you would like and I'm going to keep this very simplistic so I can show you now um, your finaling touches or your finishing touches for a layout 
I'm just drag this down in layers. Now once you have all of your items in play on where you want them to be in the Paint Shop Pro and in GIMP, it's going to be under Effects and 3D Effects. You're going to find the drop shadowing. You're going to click on it and click OK. And this will add this, custom, this drop shadow to your liking here to give it a more realistic look. In the Photoshop Elements in the Creative Suites, you're going to find this under Styles. And there's a drop shadow style that you can apply to your entire layout. Um, and we'll get more in depth with shadows later on, but this is just to give you the basics on how you can get started using all of the creations that you're downloading currently um, and start your memory keeping. With each of these, like I said, you can play around if you wanted the shadow to be a little bit more intense or less intense. It's all up to you. Um, and like I said, this is the best way that you're going to figure out how to do it is by actually opening up the program and just playing. And I call it playing because it's basically what you're going to do the first time. <laughs> the first time I did it, I played around a lot. And I had a lot of undo and a lot of um, starting over that I did. The biggest thing that I like um, about using the Paint Shop Pro is that while you're in the process of doing this and you're in the process of creating, it saves as you're going along. It saves a temporary file. So just in case you have a, um, an internet problem or a computer problem, something crashes, something happens, it'll automatically save that for you. So when you reopen it, it will be there and you didn't lose any work. That's one thing that I found as a downfall. Um, I do use both the Photoshop and the Paint Shop Pro, but the Photoshop has crashed on me a couple times and I've lost everything. Um, but with this Paint Shop Pro, you're going to have a saved copy of what you've been working on. And it saves automatically for you. And there we go. You have just created a layout and not much time at all. And like I said, if something doesn't go right, you don't like it, uh, always, there's always the undo or the delete. Right click will give you the more options of where you can arrange, delete, um, or duplicate any layers that you're working with. Thanks so much and I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a shout. Um, and be sure to grab up more sweet digi scraps on my blog all through December at www.sweetdigiscraps.blogspot.com.